so without further ado, I just want to introduce uh, Harriet Mullen. Um, Harriet's poems, short stories, and essays have been published widely and reprinted, reprinted in over 100 anthologies, and her work has been selected four times for the Best American Poetry Anthology series. She is a re recipient of numerous grants, fellowships, and prizes. Her poetry books include Recyclopedia and Sleeping with the Dictionary, it's a great book. A collection of her essays and interviews, The Cracks Between What We Are and What We Are Supposed to Be, was published in 2012. Her most recent collection of poetry, Urban Tumbleweed, Notes from a Tonka Diary, was published by Grey Wolf Press in 2013. She is the recipient of Beyond Baroque Literary Arts Center's 2019 George Dury Smith Award for Outstanding Achievement in Poetry. Please welcome Harriet Mullen. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I'm really glad to see so many faces here tonight. Um, and hooray for Beyond Baroque, for lasting as long as it has with, with the literature in LA. So um, I'm going to read uh, some from um, Urban Tumbleweed. Uh, these are um, not really traditional tanka. Um, there is a limit on the number of syllables. Tanka traditionally is a Japanese form um, of uh, 34 syllables. Um, in English, people tend to write lines, five lines of tanka, uh, with a line of five syllables, seven, five, and then two more of seven syllables. But I have not done that. <laughs> but I have tried to keep them to 34 syllables. And this book was um, a project that began with my wanting to walk in Los Angeles, which I know is practically illegal. <laughs> but, um, you know, I actually do usually take the bus to work, so I kind of had a walk already uh, in my routine of walking to the bus and walking from the bus stop back home again. And I do things like walk to the post office, walk to the grocery store. Uh, and I try to actually drive as little as possible in Los Angeles, even though I know it's required sometimes. So, um, and you know, you see the place a little bit differently when you're walking. And so part of this was just about being aware of what's in our, what's in our environment, uh, both the built environment and the natural world, because we didn't actually obliterate nature, we just built on top of it. Um, and also this was partly, um, a way of responding to my students who, when we were reading some so-called nature poetry, they said, well, we can't relate to this because we're so urban, we live in Los Angeles. And uh, so I, I was interested, now I take my students to the botanical garden on the campus at UCLA, so we, we do a Tonka walk through the garden. So, okay, I'm gonna read a few of these. <clears throat> Instead of scanning newspaper headlines, I spend the morning reading names of flowers and trees in the botanical garden. Flowers of evergreen tree called bottle brush, not stiff bristles but velvety filaments, leave fingers brushed with yellow pollen. Blackfoot daisies, dark foliage withstands extreme heat and drought with bright eyed flowers that bloom almost year round. Flame tree, I must have missed your season of fire. All I see are your ashy knees, your kindling limbs, branches of extinguished blossoms. Purple jacaranda blooms spectacular on branches overhead, underfoot a sticky mess where they land on the sidewalk. Awakened too early on Saturday morning by the song of a mockingbird, imitating my clock radio alarm. <laughs> Chain link fence, locked gate, protect this urban garden. Fugitive fragrance of honeysuckle escapes to tempt the passing stranger. Folded cardboard tent-shaped trap hanging among dark leaves of the lemon tree to capture the galling Mediterranean fly. Why should I care about my neighbor's riotous dandelions? Does he concern himself with my slovenly jacaranda? <laughs> Walking along the green path with buds in my ears, too engrossed in the morning news to listen to the stillness of the garden. Shy extrovert entices and repels with petals and thorns 
modest exhibitionist hides her blush under a pink ruffle. Even in this landscaped paradise, people buy fresh cut flowers considered more aesthetic than the ones growing in the yard. <laughs> we plan to hike to the top of the trail for a breathtaking view of Pacific, but turn back down at the sight of a rattler. <laughs> Gazing up at the city's hanging gardens, concrete walls of freeway overpasses with overgrown fringes of tangled vines. With daily commuters, an extra passenger on the bus, ladybug clinging to the window, didn't need to pay a fare. <laughs> From a distance, wrecked cars on the freeway are crumpled toys, the helicopter circling up above, a curious dragonfly. Parking in front of the apartment block, the produce truck driver, whose horn announces his arrival with La Cucaracha. <laughs> Blast of hellish breath, infernal scourge, parched wind that whips and scorches, green torches, oily eucalyptus trees bursting into flame. Pilots drop tons of water and fire retardant on 200-foot flames engulfing juniper, oak, and ponderosa pine. Diminutive green-gold fans wavering with the faintest breeze, each languid leaf of the ginkgo tree lets me feel a bit cooler. No tree in sight to shade us from the searing glare that cloudless day in Chinatown you stop to buy a paper parasol. Clean dirt marks the path lined with white stones winding through the well-tended park, leading to a rippling stream created for our pleasure. Hiking up Topanga Canyon Trail, we spoke of bobcats, coyotes, and rattlesnakes but only harmless lizards crossed our path that time. <laughs> Don't need picket fences, brick wall, or razor wire. Our home's protected by prickly pear cactus and thorny bougainvillea. Native or not, you're welcome in our gardens. Lavender's dress is not so vibrant as your green trousers and purple velour sleeves. All water is recycled, though toilet to tap was an unfortunate slogan for the municipal water treatment plant. <laughs> I have shamelessly neglected all of the succulent jades and aloes you planted around the patio, and they have thrived. My visitor from Nebraska buys a sack of assorted seashells at a souvenir shop then scatters them along the beach. <laughs> a profusion of oleanders to beautify the freeway and filter the air, though leaf, stem, and blossom all are poison. My reckless shadow landing on the 12-lane freeway down below this pedestrian bridge, playing chicken with oncoming cars. Here we have neighborhoods where apricot, fig, and citrus trees are grown for show, where ripe to bursting fruit is left to drop and rot. Hummingbird alters its course, zooming closer to check out the giant hibiscus flower, only me in my red summer dress. When you complain about the worm in your salad bowl, our server assures us that is how you know the lettuce is organic.
In my room at El Bonito, nicknamed Elbo, what a previous guest left behind resembles a different body part. <laughs> no thanks, she said, when he offered a sip from his flask. You'd look good in a bikini, he told her as she waited for the bus. I'm not homeless, I'm a bum. I was living in luxury, making plenty money, but I gave it all up for alcohol. Adorned with snakes around his neck like jewelry, he knows that the most beautiful reptiles are not always the most venomous. A Venice Beach sculptor caresses wet sand to make a shapely mermaid. He charges each tourist a fee to take her picture. Urban tumbleweed, some people call it, discarded plastic bag we see in every city, blown down the street with vagrant wind. Waiting for the bus, a girl with plush pink rabbit ears to match her spring outfit, not sure what kind of bunny she's supposed to be. Because of the drizzling rain, you listen to the sound of the wind. There, for a brief moment, you found shelter under boughs of pines. Standing his ground in a pair of elegant leather shoes, offering each passerby a chance to buy the homeless newspaper. At night, our tidy, clean, green park is locked to keep out rough sleepers who bed down on sidewalks next to shopping carts full of rubbish. Visiting with us in Los Angeles, our friend went out for a sunny walk returned with wrists bound, misapprehended by cops. Meandering through hilltop neighborhood of splendid old mansions, I loiter at wrought iron gates picketing the senator's home. When you see me walking in the neighborhood, stopping to admire your garden, I might be composing a tonka in my head. Trapped and hunted to the edge of extinction, gone for nearly 90 years when a lone gray wolf appears in California. At first, the dog walker mistook it for a horror movie prop, that severed head found in the park beneath the Hollywood sign. They stare as I peer into the window of a junk shop, bright beady eyes of a taxidermy wolf with mangy, molting fur. I'm sure I must have been laughing the first time we hiked that mountain trail when you introduced me to the sticky monkey flower. Plain colors we wear compared to green shimmering wings of hummingbird stroking opulent purple velvet of Mexican sage. Today we found an ephemeral shrine at the end of the trail rocks and pebbles some hiker had arranged to make a spiral. In their beach-themed bungalow, a coffee table built from a recycled surfboard cut from a California redwood tree. Even itinerant tumbleweed had roots attaching it to the land before its stem snapped and strong winds pushed it down the road. On a breath of air, they may last longer and travel farther than we know. Our folded paper boats and origami airplanes. Thank you. Wow.